the next splint one of the commonly used arthrosis in orthopedic setup that is thomas splint yes it was invented by dr hug owen thomas yes one thomas yes so what is the purpose of the thomas splint there are two important purpose first for the immobilization purpose yes for traction and immobilization i can use a thomas splint yes and the second thing if i want to transport a patient assume that i am have to shift the patient from casualty yes patient is coming to a casualty then i will be stabilizing the patient with the thomas splint and with this i can safely transport the patient from casualty to the ward or icu or the operative setup for the transport purpose yes thomas splint is more important yes so how to choose a thomas splint because it is a very common thing you should know as a medical officer yes so first thing we have to choose the ring size yes so the ring size is measured by the oblique circumference yes the oblique circumference so oblique circumference from the two points one is the crouch or a groin area yes and this topmost for part anteriorly it marks the asis or in posterior aspect what will be it will be the marking the inferior just inferior to the gluteal fold so that area we have to mark and in a oblique manner we have to measure the circumference yes so that circumference assume that if it is coming as 30 inches so we need to choose the thomas uh, splint with a ring circumference of 30 inch so assume that the patient is not cooperative or patient is having severe pain so that time we can measure the oblique circumference of the opposite side then add 2 inch to it so this will match the required size of the affected side because we have to take the measurement including the swelling so to accommodate the swelling we need to add 2 inches yes then how to choose the length so this length is mainly um, dependent on the inner var or inner beam of the thomas splint so how to um, this thing identify which part is the inner which part is outer so the inner uh, bar will be a very much straight yes but the outer uh, this thing bar or the outer beam will be having a projection laterally so this projection is to accommodate the greater trochanter yes so this also has to be um this thing we have to have to take this in mind because if we apply it in a reverse manner then the patient will be having a severe pain yes because the gt will be having a uh, this thing it will be creating a pressure sore in the if it is if the thomas splint is applied in a reverse manner at the surface of the greater trochanter or it will cause trochanteric bursitis yes so you measure the length of the limb from the crouch or groin to the tip of the sole yes then you add 6 to 9 inches to this length so this length actually assume that if you are getting a 36 inches yes add some assume that you are getting a 30 inches of the limb so you add 6 to 9 inches which comes around uh, 36 inch so the inner beam length should be at least 36 to 39 inch next we will proceed to spinal orthosis which means the orthosis which are used in the spine related conditions first one soft cervical collar yes so this is made up of a soft material and it is applied in the cervical or a neck region and hence the name so this soft cervical collar everyone might have seen at least once in your lifetime in your orthopedic opd many patients will be wearing this or routinely in our indian movies whenever a actor actress or a villain is having a road traffic accident they will be wearing this just to show that they had a neck injury yes so as shown in the movies it is used for the muscle spasm around the neck injury and for cervical spondylosis related neck pain yes but one catch regarding soft cervical collar is they won't restrict any movement yes which means they will allow either 
this thing forward flexion or extension or lateral rotation in the cervical region freely they freely allow all movements yes they only offer some resistance to the movements so that's why they are given only for immobilization yes they cannot restrict the movements if the patient want to do active movements even with the soft cervical collar in situ they can freely do the movements yes so how to prevent those movements that time we have to give a rigid cervical collar or hard cervical collar so this will prevent the movements at the cervical region up to 20 to 30 percentage so whenever you are suspecting a patient with a cervical spine injury yes in a trauma setup you have to advise a rigid cervical collar so that then only it will give the required immobilization at the cervical region yes so this is the side by side comparison rigid one so this is a soft one okay so if you want further more immobilization at the spine region so that time we can give a philadelphia collar as the name suggests it was first used in philadelphia yes or invented in philadelphia so what is the difference between the routine hot cervical collar or a rigid cervical collar and a philadelphia collar see here you can see a opening here yes so assume that if whenever a patient is having a uh, spine injury or a neck injury regularly they will require they might be unconscious and they will require intubation yes so once once the patient is intubated if they don't recover within a one or two weeks we need to maintain to maintain the airway we need to put a tracheostomy yes or the patient sometimes the patient will require an emergency tracheostomy so that time we need to remove a hard cervical collar or we need to break it yes so there is an added advantage in philadelphia collar already there is an opening so we can maintain an airway with help of a tracheostomy yes and one more thing the module is comparatively more stable because as you can see in a hard cervical collar only there is a projection in the anterior aspect yes but so this is to hold the chin and one more the lower um, part the projection is to hold the or to have a hold at the sternum region yes but you see in case of a philadelphia collar there are projections to accommodate both the mandibular part as well as the occiput region so it will refer 30 to 45 percentage restriction of free movements yes so this will restrict 30 to 40 percentage of flexion and extension as well as the lateral rotation at the cervical region so it will be more stable for immobilization with patients suspected for cervical spine injury so the next brace taylor's brace yes so taylor is the name of the person who invented it yes so it is also called as tlso t for thoracic L for lumbar, S for sacral, thoraco, lumbo, sacral, orthosis, or it is also called as DLSO, darso, lumbo, sacral, orthosis. So, this will be worn similar to a waistcoat. Yes, so the similar to the waistcoat, it will be worn. It is to be to maintain the thoracic, lumbar, and this thing, sacral spine in neutral position or to maintain the curvature. Yes, so normally our thoracic spine. Yes, thoracic spine will be in mild mild kyphosis. Yes, our lumbar spine will be in lordosis. Starting from cervical spine will be in lordosis. La thoracic spine will be in um, kyphosis. Lumbar spine will be in lordosis, and sacral spine will also will be in minor kyphosis. To maintain this curvature, Taylor's brace will be useful. Yes, and what is the indication? Yes. We have covered only the function now. So, what are the indications? First and foremost, to think. Yes, they are generally given for a conservative management of the compression fracture of the body of the spine. Yes, compression fracture of the body of the vertebral column or spine. Yes, so whenever the 
vertebral width after a compression fracture is less than 15 percentage if it is not associated with a neural deficit then neurological deficit then we will be giving a conservative management most preferably with the Taylor's brace yes so this is applied in the posterior aspect then patients with lysthesis lumbar spondylolisthesis to correct the grade 1 or 2 this thing 1 and 2 grade of lysthesis Taylor's brace will be useful then third thing to correct kyphosis deformity the minor kyphosis that can be corrected with the help of Taylor's brace fourth one in patients with TB spine or pot spine to give immobilization yes we what the regimen we use is called as a mid path regimen so in that we need to give immobilization with the help of the Taylor's brace yes so coming to the next next one cash brace so this word cash does, has nothing to do with the money yes so this C stands for cruciform so this shape looks like a cross so that's why the name cruciform so where it is applied it is applied in the anterior aspect Taylor's brace is applied in the posterior aspect so cruciform anterior spinal hyperextension brace so this is applied to maintain the spine in hyperextension yes so whenever a patient is having a flexion related injury injury which causes the spine deformity in flexion yes so that time to maintain the spine in extension or hyperextension yes that time cast brace can be applied so it also has similar indication to Taylor's brace but the main difference is it is applied in the anterior aspect sometimes it is also mentioned as ash brace also